Ah, welcome to this quick video about my Ford Model T. So I'm rebuilding this 1923 Ford Model T here and this video just documents uh, some recent things that I've done on it to try and uh, get it to the point where I can get it on the road properly again. I finished painting all the chassis the other day and I stepped back from it and I looked down the end like this and I suddenly realised that one of the chassis rails was actually bent inwards which is a little bit annoying to find out after you have of course painted everything so anyhow I didn't want to damage the paint too much but I've come up with this idea for straightening it so I've just got my standard tube bender here acting onto the inside of the chassis rail got some wood plates to try and protect the paint and then obviously this pushes up um, and hopefully we'll straighten it up nice and you just pump on the handle like this and what I'm gonna have to do is over bend it slightly and then see what that looks like I reckon over bending it um, and checking it should do quite nice I should have a nice straight chassis rail All right, now I seem to have over bent it somewhat and I've got a slight kink in the chassis rail so what I'm going to have to do is try and get that kink out and then I reckon that will put that back to straight. So that is now straight. Straight enough for my intents and purposes. Yeah, it was quite kinked in before. No, that uh, jack system did it quite nice. Of course it means I've gone and damaged my nice paint. But then again, I was, I've got to put a top coat of black because this is just black epoxy. So I'm going to be putting a top enamel coat on it later on anyway. Um, I'll just have to repair that a little bit up again. After finding that I had problems with the magneto and stripping the engine apart, I had a look at the crankshaft and I found that I had an end float problem. I had about 15 thou of end float, which was just a little bit too much. Now I could have left it like that, but I thought while the engine was apart, I'd try and fix it. So I got a new rear main bearing here, scraped out, unfortunately it was 10 thou oversized, so I had to scrape out 10 thou out of it and then I fitted it to the crank with a stuff called Time Saver. And it did quite a good job. Unfortunately then I discovered that I had a slight bend in my crankshaft, which was really quite irritating at this point. I'd had the crankshaft tested both for cracks and, well I thought it had been tested for cracks and straightness and I don't think they bothered looking at the straightness. So I used my pipe bender to try and strain it up and um, that worked relatively well. And as you can see here, I fitted it back on the crankshaft with some V-blocks to, you know, uh, see. I got it back to within about four thou of being straight, which was pretty good. And I was just going after the last little bit when I suddenly found that it suddenly overbent really quickly. And um, when I looked at it, I found that what actually happened is that a crack had um, started. So I don't think it was my process that cracked the crankshaft. It was already there and it just basically revealed the crack which unfortunately has put me in a terrible position because now I've got a standard engine and I'm trying to find a crankshaft to fit it and I've not had a lot of luck. After that, feeling somewhat annoyed, I went to France and I took my boat out to sea and had a nice little bit of time off. I got back to the UK and on the first weekend me and the boy decided to go to a Bewley Auto Jumble. Part of me was hoping I'd find a crankshaft. But I saw this lovely car here with a Rolls-Royce V12 Merlin engine in it for sale. Um, this Ford Model T's in the uh, museum there, which uh, gave me some inspiration. And Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which was nice to see. It inspired a lot of people. But this was my favourite, this lovely Auburn Roadster. Uh, I just think that's such a beautiful looking car. And capable of, I can't remember how much it was, 120 mile an hour or something like that. But from the auto jumble, the only thing I managed to buy was these, which is pretty crazy, really. But nevertheless, I got to see some seats, which gave me some idea of how I was going to build my seats, or seats that fit the car better, and other bits and pieces. So crankshaft issues still holding me up. I thought I'd just better get on with the parts that I've got and get them painted. Right, so my hogshead is all nice and clean now. I've wire brushed it several times. Bloody fly. Um, so I cleaned it up lots of times, um, but there still seems to be some sort of ingrained something in it, which I'm a little bit confused by. 
I've come to a conclusion it might be paint because I've stuck oven cleaner on it, I've had various degreases, I've wire brushed it about two or three times and there's still this sort of something in there. Um, so anyhow, I've got to the point now where I've cleaned it as best I can really and I think the last clean and last wire brush and then I'm going to get it painted. So I'm just about to put it in my proper parts cleaner. Now you're thinking, God, how privileged is he? He's got a nice parts cleaner. Well, it's perhaps not quite that much of a privilege. It is my dishwasher. And the hogshead just happens to fit in it. So if you're thinking, hey, how privileged is he? He's got a dishwasher. Well, this is about 10 years old and I bought it about five years ago, secondhand and had to repair it. So I'm not quite that privileged. So anyhow, it's now in the dishwasher. No one is home, so they won't know that I've used their dishwasher to clean this part of a 98 or 100 year old Model T Ford in there. Um, so as, as long as I get this all clean and out before the rest of the household come home, if you know what I mean, they'll be none the wiser. And of course, as long as they don't watch this video. So it just about fits in there. I try to make sure that this bit, when it's in there, will still be able to spin. And I chuck out loads of nice hot water down on it. The bit underneath obviously is going to be spraying water up. I've used normal um, dishwasher stuffy and I'm just going to spray it with a bit of this stuff. Just to, This is just some standard sort of thing. I think what I'll do is I'll just put that on there. It's, so it's, it's in these little areas here that it seems to be ingrained. So I was figuring if I stick that on there, I'll probably leave it in here. And also on these, just in these little areas here, and I've wire brushed it really, really well, degreased it several times with gunk, I've degreased it, all kinds of stuff, and oven cleaner, and it's still there. So there's a slight black look to it. So I'm kind of assuming it's just the old paint still on it. But what I'll do is I'll stick this in it, Get that all in there really good. I might just leave that to soak for a little while and then I'll run it probably on a normal setting on the dishwasher um, and uh, as I say I've got about three hours before I've got to remove all the evidence and destroy any um, anything that can link back to what I've done with our dishwasher here. So there it goes and I even had the top tray free to stick the rest of our sort of standard washing in. So that's pretty cool. So trusty dishwasher has finished the job. Let's see what's happened. Jeez. Yeah, it's hot. A little bit hotter than usual. I wonder if that's because of such a large chunk of cast. Got a little bit more flash rusting, obviously. Um, kind of expected that. Those black bits are still there. You know, I'm, I'm sure these black bits now, I'm sure they're just paint. I mean, let's put it this way. It's had oil cleaner on it. It's had degreaser. It's had, I've used gun wash in my spray gun all over it. And it's been in the dishwasher. So I reckon that must just be old paint. Deep in the sort of cast there. Looks good. Dishwasher looks okay too. Cool. Now for paint. I get quite fussy about paint and making sure that I've really prepared parts. Um, simply because I've had so many problems in the past on the boat, you know, with paint failing. So at last, with all the preparation done, I could start getting some epoxy. And I've used aircraft epoxy on some of my engine parts because it's temperature resistant and I've used it on other bits and then I started doing my fuel can here which got a little bit complicated. Oh, cool. 
Um, yeah. So that's got aircraft epoxy on it, and then it's got like a red hammer, a smooth right paint on it, and then I'm just putting this gold smooth right oh, around the thing. Oh, the point I should note at this particular part is that this bit of footage here is actually sped up 20 times. I must have been sat out there for about 45 minutes doing this or an hour, I don't know, time just sort of went into this massive black hole and you know just passed away from me. I think I've got the colour of this can right because uh, all the pictures I've found. I think it perhaps should have been a little bit more of a matte red but then again you're never quite sure with these things if it was actually matte red or the reason why everything that's around today is matte red is because it's all old and you know or it's been copied from things that were old and the painted um, you know uh, faded away over time but it, it looks quite nice now I'm quite happy with this can and it's sat up I would like to really stick it on a shelf somewhere <laughs> until it goes on the car but uh, it did take rather a long amount of time to paint So this is my steering wheel. Um, I've got an original Ford Fordite one over there with Ford stamped into it. But it's it's quite big and always wanted a wood steering wheel. This is a strange type of wood though. I don't know if you can see, but it's like a. I thought it was some sort of wood when I bought it because it was all dirty, and I've sanded it, and it looks almost like it's MDF. I've got a funny feeling this is some sort of compressed resin sawdust or something, I don't know, it's, it's strange. I can't see any joints on it, but it's very strong, so I'm going to see how it varnishes it up. In the meantime, I've got my spider in there, I've painted it all up in nice black enamel spray paint. And I'm just using some Sikaflex on the joints. This is Sikaflex 221 which is really good stuff. Um, the only trouble is, is if I ever need to take this apart, I'll probably have to break it to get it apart. I'm using the stainless steel um, countersink slot screws on it. And uh, it should look nice with some marine varnish on it. That's about it for this video. Uh, a lot of things have happened in the last few months and yeah, having this uh, crankshaft issue has really knocked the wind out of my sails, I'm afraid. Uh, it's a, realistically, it's a 1,500 to 2,000 pound problem, and that's about $3,000. I've managed to source a standard crank in the meantime, um, but it's a bit worn, it's 100 years old, and it'll probably be fine. And you could argue, hey, the car's 100 years old, what do you care? Well, the thing is, is I don't really want to get caught out. I don't want to put everything back together again, have the thing snap on me or any kind of issues. I want to have confidence. I want to have a nice clear head when I'm driving this on massive journeys about 10 miles away from my home. I mean, realistically, I'm not going to take this thing across America. But nevertheless, it just feels wrong to bung something in there that doesn't quite, that isn't quite perfect. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll see how I go. I'm still trying to come up with a decision on that one. In the meantime, I've also been doing other stuff. I mean, I've been learning how to TIG weld, my TIG welder here. Been to the boat and done lots of work on the boat, lots of TIG welding and general welding, and taken it to sea for some real nice long trips. So it's been a, a weird few months, but hopefully, hopefully I'm getting there. Anyhow, if you like this video, then please like and subscribe. If you don't like the video, then please dislike. Because the algorithm, it doesn't really care. You know, it just likes to see interaction. So more interaction, more chances of me getting past about 250 views or something, which that'd just be nice. But anyhow, thanks very much for watching. And if you have a Ford, then may the Ford be with you. Man, that sounded cheesier than I thought.